Alright, let's um, continue modeling this uh, outlet piece. Uh, outlet, but switch. Um, let's see, select the outside edges. Press G to get rid of the grid there. And just kind of push them in a bit. Okay. And I said I would be using some of the new 3ds Max 2010 features with the graphite modeling tools up here. And one of the best features I've uncovered so far, I guess, is the Flow Connect. And let's see, Flow Connect. Here it is. When you click it, what it does is it creates a bridge between one section and another. So it will take half of the angle and it will make it on either side. So you have a nice um, even curve throughout it. So it, it's just really useful for making kind of smooth transitions without having to hand place everything. And it works all the way around, so it's really great. Um, I'd suggest using it whenever you can. It's, um, it's absolutely amazing. But let's uh, start working on these little things here. So just make a sphere about the right size, maybe a bit bigger than that. Bring down the segments as it's not supposed to be that high poly. Squish it in a bit. Just go fly here for a second. Okay. Next, make a box using auto grid. Just start on the flat of the surface there. Bring it up. Alright, just like this. Convert it to a pro boolean and pick that. That way you'll have a nice screw head. Press W here and copy it over. And don't worry about lining up exactly with the picture because the picture isn't exactly straight. I try my best, but unfortunately you can't always win. So um, next let's start with this. So select these two, connect two segments, and increase the pinch until you get it kind of aligned. So what we're aiming for is the same distance between these two things. It doesn't have to line up perfectly with that. So 45 um, seems to be doing pretty good. Let me maximize this. Select these two again. Connect. Um, increase the pinch until you get the distance between here and here. So right there seems good. Select all four of these lines now. Connect. And just line it up with the edges there. Okay. Oops. Press apply. There. Okay. Connect again. And line it up. Do it two more times. And last time. Okay. Next, select these two polygons here. Press grow, alt, click to deselect those. Let's um, go into our little four view here. Minimize that. I'm probably going to have to restart my computer here because it's not being very cooperative. But anyway, inset these just a tiny bit. Okay. Press grow. Then deselect the internal polygons. this is going to do, it's going to allow us to create those little grooves. And they're actually pretty important for casting shadows and whatnot. But extrude and extrude them back. Okay, you don't have to go very far, just enough to give it the height. Maybe, I don't know, 0.73 looks pretty good. Okay, just check 
make sure it's pretty nice. It does. And then, um, let's go maximize this here. We have to select this poly and um, hmm, how am I going to do this? Detach it. Detach. Okay. Now that you have it, just extrude it a little bit. Just give it a little bit of thickness, like an actual switch. Select border, select the back, because the back doesn't actually have um, polygon on it. And cap. Okay. Now, um, go to the hierarchy, effect pivot only, center to object. And then just rotate it a few degrees, not that many, turn angle snap off. Just a tiny bit to give it a little bit of um, variation here. Then sync it back so that it covers everything. What you end up with is a nice little switch like that with the bottom depressed and the top um, up. And also to make this even a little more realistic here, just like that, control click the edges here and chamfer. Give it a small chamfer there. Okay, next select this polygon, just delete it. And go into the front view here. Copy it over. Line it up perfectly. Actually, this doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you can, and I believe that is pretty good right there. Okay, perspective, F3 to turn it off, and there you go. Two switches on the wall, wall thing. Alright, that looks pretty good. So next, let's um, unhide all, and select this, and we will link, actually, Link uh, that, 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 and both these little screws here so that when we um, scale it, everything uh, scales with it. Okay, now I'll be right back. I'm going to go measure how big this actually is. Alright, I've determined that this is 5 inches wide, so 5 inches this way. So, what we're going to do Go to standard box, and we'll just make a box right here. Okay, and make the width five, and we'll just bring the length down just because the height doesn't really matter. Next, select this entire piece here. Okay, go into front view and just scale it out on all axes. And just bring it up. Okay. Keep scaling it down until it equals the height of this thing. Or the width, sorry. Right there. Now we have the perfect size oops, outlet. Select this. Come on there. Um, should we select everything here? group, and let's call this um, double switch. Okay. And now we have a little switch we can use wherever we want. And I'll get some measurements for exactly where it's placed later on, but for now, I'm just going to the top viewport here. And just sync it right into the wall. Okay, there we go. Um, looks pretty realistic. Um, yeah, in the next section we will um, probably start making some events.